Fire number one for the ground round late models. Danny Sullivan, Kevin Booten in the front row. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. Another Saturday night of short track racing action kicks off at the Big A. And they're side by side and turns one and two. Uh-oh. Push up the racetrack for Danny Sullivan. That left the door open for Bucko Brandon, but he doesn't try it yet. Going into turn number three, Brandon backs out of it. Kevin Booten's got it on the top side. Brandon Atkins looking to roll in the number four and follow that 25 on the top of the racetrack. We do that number one, Danny Sullivan by inches down on the inside. A good runoff turn number four for Danny Sullivan allows him to take the point. A bobble off of turn two from both the front row, the three of Sullivan and the 25 from Booten. Bucko Branham sticks his nose through. They're now three wide for the three spot. Bobby Therrien coming through down in the middle. Brandon Atkins headed back out of it on the top. Oh boy, look out. Kevin Booten didn't appreciate uh, that move by Bobby Therrien, and Booten gave it back to him along the front stretch. Heck of a save by Bobby Therrien in that five Vermont car. Out front in the three, it is Danny Sullivan. Running in second is Bucko Branham in the number 20. Bobby Therrien third. Here comes Brandon Atkins through on the inside for four. Atkins takes that number four car into four. Oh, he power slides and turns one and two. A big bobble from that number four car, but he's able to hang on to it. Putin didn't gain any ground as far as a position. And he remains in the four spot. Danny Sullivan in that number three car. They've been working hard to get that car where they want it. And right now he's out front of the professor point leader, Buck O'Branham. Here comes Bobby Therrien in the five Vermont. Therrien has no problem working his way around Bucko. They're side by side off the fourth turn, but uh, fighting back on the top is the professor. Bucko Branham in the number 20 car works his way back even at the front stretch. They race off the second turn. Bobby Therrien says, see you later. Bobby Therrien in that five car to the second spot. It's Bucko Branham back to third. Bucko Branham in that number 20 can't quite get the grip on the top of the racetrack that he wants, and here goes Therrien for the top spot. Therrien looks underneath Danny Sullivan, who has been running a middle groove in that number three car off the second turn. Sullivan still has the nose out in front. Here comes Bobby T. They're even going into turn number three. Halfway through the corner, Therrien sticks the nose out in front. Drag race for the lead off the fourth turn. Who's it going to be? Therrien down on the inside of the five one not. Well, Bobby Therrien has worked his way from last in qualifier number one. Only had to pass four cars, but he works his way from fifth, which was last, all the way up to the point. And he's going to see parallel flags, two to go this time for Bobby Therrien. Two to go. Bucko Branham now trying to dig underneath the three of Danny Sullivan. Sullivan has now tried to get that number three card down towards the inside lane. He was running a middle groove earlier in the race, but he sees Bucko Branham's now coming. Branham in the 20, trying to follow the same line around the racetrack that Bobby Therrien is. Can't get it to stick. White flag is out one more time around. Bobby Therrien in the five Vermont car. Looks pretty strong. He set up all his passes down on the bottom of the racetrack, and he made a heck of a save here along the front stretch after Kevin Booten got into the back of him. Here he comes off the fourth turn. Bobby T wins it. Very in first. Second's going to be Danny Sullivan. Third, Buckle Branham. Fourth, Brandon Atkins. And fifth will go to Kevin Booten. For a ride on the trolley, Dan Ruger will take you over through the pit area and show you what's going on. All right, ready to go with qualifier number two. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Para Sevens race up into turn number one. They're even, but here comes Nick Lagoy on the bottom. Lagoy with a good run, but even better run up top. Leclerc in the number seven on top of the racetrack. Had his nose out in front, but digging back on the bottom is Nick Lagoy in the seven New York. They're going to lean on one another off the fourth turn. Drag race for the lead. Lap number one is going to go to Leclerc. The red seven pulls through on top of the racetrack. The white seven down on the bottom is struggling as he bobbles off of turn number two, but he's real strong with the motor down the back stretch. They race into turn number three, still wheel to wheel, door to door. Here they come off the fourth turn, the leader of lap two, again going to be Leclerc. Leclerc with a good drive off the fourth turn, but much better off the second turn is Lagoy in the seven New York. Let's watch him this time. They're even down the back stretch, and again, Lagoy is able to drive it with the lead into turn number three, but coming back is the seven on top, that is Leclerc. Meanwhile, sitting in the pocket, Nick Sweet in that 88, watching the battle that time at the line, it was actually Nick Lagoy down on the inside. Lagoy in the white number seven on the inside had the lead. Oh, Nick Sweet was thinking three wide as both cars pushed up the racetrack. He thought better of it. He's going to ride right behind the side-by-side -side battle for now. It's a pretty good gap back to the fourth place car, Mike Hall. Nick Lagoy now pulling ahead of that seven of Leclerc. Leclerc wants to get the seven car down on the inside. He can't do so. Nick Sweet in the 88 is now even for the second spot. It is Lagoy in front. Leclerc still trying to hang on up on the outside. But Nick Sweet is digging on the bottom of the racetrack, much like Bobby Therrien was at the halfway point. Nick Lagoy is the leader. 
Nick Lagoy shows the way in the McBride Auto Group, number seven, New York, but here comes Nick Sweet. What a drive off of turn number two for Nick Sweet, and he is now even going into turn number three. As they race off the fourth turn, Nick Sweet is going to dispatch that seven New York car, and he is to the point on lap number six. Nick Lagoy with no issue getting around. Oh, boy, look out. There goes the seven of Josh LeClaire. He loops it all on his own, and hopefully he can get that car rolling. He's now parked down on the inside of turn number two. And we are going to have a yellow flag. Seven. Four laps remain here in the second qualifier for the late models. All right, ready to go. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Good jump down on the bottom for Nick Sweet in the 88. Lagoy will look to file behind. Lagoy does get down on the inside, but it's too late. Nick Sweet has already taken off. As they race into turn number three, they run single file. LeClaire has worked his way around Hall's number 09 car and into the third spot. Last time Nick Sweet was here, he swept. He won his heat race, got disqualified. I believe the car was too low back three or four weeks ago when the late models were here. But then had no problem. They raised the height of that car and had no issue whatsoever in the feature races. He picked up both feature victories in that number 88 car. This time around, he's got half a lap before he's going to see the white flag. And he has a car that is capable of winning one of these two features tonight. White flag is out for next week. It's Lagoy running in second still. About three car lengths behind. And in third is now my call as problems on Josh LeClaire's number seven. All right, here he comes off the fourth turn. Nick Sweet is going to pick up the victory in qualifier number two. Second will go to Nick Lagoy. Third to Mike Hall Jr. And Josh LeClaire wind up with spot number four. All right, it's Foley in the 66, D Moore in the 86. Here they come. Slow pace off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Rob Foley takes the lead down on the inside with C.J. LeVere hanging right on the back bumper and C.J. LeVere thinking three wide in turn number two. LeVere's car is hooked up as they race three wide down the back stretch. Look at Harold thread the needle through the middle. Nearly five wide into turn number three. Fortunate, Mike Whalen in the 11 and Scott Richer both got on the binders as that could have been a mess in turn number three. Chris LeVere leads lap number one. Rob Foley hanging on for second atop the, on top of the racetrack, but here comes Harold. Fresh off a victory last week. Oh, but here comes the great babe, Scott Richner. Richner in the 81, working down on the inside. Harold tries to shut the door. He can't do it. Here comes the 81 of Scott Richner. Harold LeVere trying to hang on as they play bumper tag along the front stretch. I believe Whalen in the 11 and the 22 of Pete Blaney got together. They're able to straighten things out along the front stretch. And we are still under green flag conditions. Three wide into turn number three. Blaney down on the inside. Harold the meat in the sandwich and up on top. It's Robert Foley. Oh boy, look out. Harold there pushing bad off of uh, turn number four. Fortunate that Robert Foley let up and got on the uh, brakes. And for Harold, that could have ended very poorly with the nose in the wall. Back on the lead out front, it is C.J. LeVere. He's got the lead by two car lengths over the 81 of Scott Richner. There's two laps to go. Popsicle sticks are out for the four of C.J. LeVere. Scott Richner in the 81 is now closed to one car length. Richner with a good drive off of turn number two down the back stretch. C.J. up on top, and it's Richner down on the bottom. They race in turns three and four. LeVere still with the advantage. Here they come off the fourth turn. White flag is out one more time around for C.J. LeVere with Scott Richner right there down on the bottom. Richner in the 81 pulls even in turn number two. Off the second turn down the back stretch. The 81 of Richner has the nose out in front, but here comes LeVere back on the top of the racetrack. They're even door to door in turn number three. LeVere sticks the nose out in front. Richner trying to fight back down on the bottom. It's going to be a drag race for the win. And at the line, C.J. LeVere wins it. Scott Richner will be second. Third, Pete Blaney. Fourth will go to Harold LeVere. Fifth will be Michael Whalen with to go, qualifier number two. 14 cars overall here in the Mini Modifieds this evening. All right, slow pace, very slow pace set by uh, Ed Brissett. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Well, Michael Wright gets the jump on top of the racetrack. They played bumper tag a bit. The inside lane was boxed up. Perhaps Jay Grave missed a uh, shift in that number 79 car. And Steven Brissett was uh, pinned behind him and couldn't get around. Out front, it's the 78 of Michael Wright. He shows the way. Tyler Brissett in the eight ball. 
He's dirt tracking his way through the second spot down on the inside, but Eddie Brissett fighting back on the top. Tyler Brissett fighting a bit of a push and turns one and two in that eight ball car. Ed Brissett is up on top of the racetrack and he is showing the way in second. Here they come off the fourth turn and it is Michael Wright showing the way. Eddie Brissett is in second and Tim LaFountain in the 41 moving through for the third spot. Brissett in bad shape up on top of turn number two. He gets the right side tires off in the bunker. Now he's got the whole car in the bunker and he's checking out the billboard sponsorships on the backstretch. Now he'll come back onto the backstretch. And he is now in spot number six. We're going to be halfway this time by. Halfway with Michael Wright showing the way. Mike Wright showing the way. Eddie Brissett in second. The teammates run three and four. It is Tim LaFountain in the 41 running in third. Steven Brissett in the 14 running on top of the racetrack. They battle for spot number three. It is a good distance back to fifth with Jay LaGrave. Behind him, it's the eight ball Tyler Brissett with two laps to go. Michael Wright, just a youngster out of uh, Alberg, Vermont. He raced with us part-time last season. He's been with us full-time this season. In the point standings, he sits uh, ninth in points, 130 points out of the top spot, and he has a white flag with one lap to go. Ed Brissett's going to battle and try for the lead. Here they come off of turn number two. Meanwhile, they're side by side for third. Steven Brissett with a real strong run up on top of the racetrack. He's going to take the third spot away. But the leader coming off of turn number four and the eventual winner of qualifier number two, Michael Wright. Second's going to be Eddie Brissett. Third, Steven Brissett. Fourth, Tim LaFountain. And fifth, we go to Tyler Brissett with Jay LaGrave in sixth. And seventh will be Chad Collins in the number 28. Outside Twaits, the Begor Supply, number 19. That's Jamie Begor. Final car in the field, first time out for Scott Fitzgerald. He is out of West Rutland, Vermont. All right, here they come, green, flag is out. Good even start as they race up into turn number one. Tyler Terry down on the bottom, has the nose out in front. They bump and bang for the three spot. It's Zach Rabtoy down on the bottom and John Booten up on the top. Booten has the three spot right now up on top. It is uh, Dylan Rabtoy in the 22 up on top of the racetrack, trying to challenge for the lead. He can't do so. Tyler Terry leads lap number one. Billy Twaits in the number four, looking three wide underneath the wrap toy number 12. Meanwhile, Beagle is up on top of that. Beagle in the 19 try and hang it all out on the top of the racetrack and do all he can to get around the wrap toy number 12. Zach Rabtoy in that number 12 car. A number of wrap toys in Mr. Beagle. As they race right now for position number four. Bigor has the spot right now up on top of the racetrack. You can tell that car is sliding a bit up on top of the racetrack, but he has now secured that four spot and can run in whatever line he wants. Bigor chooses to go down to the inside and work on the 23 of John Booten, who's loose off of turn number four. Bigor in that number 19 has the car up on top of the racetrack. Booten's down on the bottom. Bigor again with a bobble in turn number two, but so did Booten. Booten's bobble a little bit more violent in the second turn. That allowed Bigor to gain a couple of car lengths. And Bigor now pulls even in turns three and four. Here they come off the fourth turn. Bigor hanging it out on the outside still. And he will have the third spot at the halfway point. Out front, it's Tyler Terry in the 44. Running in second, Dylan Raptoy in the 22. Jamie Bigor is third with a 19. And John Booten fourth with a 23. The race for fifth, side by side. It's Billy Twaits on the bottom of the four. Up on top. It is Zachary Raptoy in the 12. They still race side by side. Get the line, give it to Raptoy in the 12. Zach Raptoy and Dylan Raptoy, both just young drivers in this division. Dylan with a, a pretty good run going on right now in the second spot. Let's see if he can hang on and keep Beagle in that third spot. Popsicle sticks are out. Two laps to go for Tyler Terry and Fuzzy Ducks number 44. This time, it is the four of Billy Twaits taking away spot number five. Zachary Rabtoy now back to sixth. And first time for Scott Fitzgerald. He can see them all. He's got the best view of the field. White flag is out. One more time around for Tyler Terry. Jamie Beagle is there on the back bumper of the 22 of Dylan Rabtoy trying to get an extra point for a heat race finish. Beagle or Dirt tracks it off the second turn. What's he going to do in turn number three? There's going to be no doubt about the winner. Tyler Terry's going to win it. Battle is heating up to the second spot. Here comes Bigor digging underneath the 22 of Raptoy. Drag race for the second spot. Bigor down on the inside. Raptoy third. Fourth John Burton. Fifth will be Billy Twaits. And qualifier number two for the Key RD Trailer Sales Renegades. Jermaine 
and McKiernan on the front. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Good start on top for McKiernan in the double nickel. It's Mary Germain fighting back down on the inside of the number 19. They're side by side off the second turn, but boy, look at the 55 vault into the lead with the progressive banking on top of the racetrack. The Avery Energy 55 of McKiernan takes the lead away. Here he comes off the fourth turn, and he shows away on lot number one. John Duquette trying to thread the needle through the middle in that number 18 car. It's Lowry up on top, and it's Amber Turner down on the inside. Amber pushes up the racetrack. They make contact, but they race into turn number three. Word is that uh, Richie Turner tonight piloting her, his sister's number 57 car. Richie Turner in that 57 tonight, driving for Amber. Here goes Sean Duquette in the number 18. Duquette looking three wide down on the inside. It's Booten moving past the Jermaine number 19, Vermont. Booten in that number 28 car takes the second spot away. Duquette still there trying to dig down on the inside. Duquette will get third. He's trying for second. Duquette comes through for third. Jermaine back to fourth on the top of the racetrack. It's Lowry there in the number 99. He runs in fifth with Richie Turner in that 57 car running behind. Richie Turner goes up to the top of the racetrack, perhaps going to try to follow Ray Germain around. Now he's going to look back down on the inside, but Lowry is sideways. He's kind of boxed behind those cars as they run side by side. Richie's going to have to think three wide if he wants to go. At the halfway point, it was Jim McKiernan showing the way, with Richie Turner still trying to find a way by for that fifth stop. Meanwhile, battle heats up for the second spot. It's the 18 of Sean Duquette on the bottom, the 28 of Ryan Booten up on top. As they drag race for the spot, still Booten on top. John Duquette in that number 18, digging down on the bottom of the racetrack. Getting that car to stick as he takes second away, down the back stretch off the second turn. They race into turn number three. It is still Duquette with the nose out in front. Coming back on the top is Booten in the 28. Here they come off the fourth turn. That spot still belongs to Duquette on the inside with two to go. Jim McKiernan's been uh, much better week in and week out in that number 55 car. The more seat time that driver gets, the better he has been. And for Jim McKiernan, he has come a long way in just this season with the white flag out and one more time around. Ryan Booten still hanging around on the outside as they race for the second spot. Duquette in the 18 down on the bottom. And uh, this time a bobble on top for Ryan Booten. Sean Duquette able to drive through down on the inside. Booten's not going away, though. Here comes Jim McKiernan off the fourth turn. He will win qualifier number two for the Renegade. Second's going to go to Sean Duquette. Third for Ryan Booten. Fourth for Charlie. Fifth will be Richie Turner. Sixth will be Ray Germain. Seventh will go to Hunter Sawyer in the number 71. Number 43 for Josh Terry. Final car on the field, the H2O well drilling number H2O. It is Robert Gordon out of Milton, Vermont. All right, here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. In the turn number one, Brent Jarvis has the 32 car in front, but Zach Daniels fights back down on the inside and then again. They are side by side down the back stretch into turn number three where Daniels drives the 30 deeper. Daniels in that 30. Kicks out the right rear a bit as they race off the fourth turn and Daniels will have the lead. Talk about Zach Daniels' wild ride last week off the back stretch. Amber Turner got around in turn number two and Zach Daniels was trying to come from the back of the pack. Didn't see, Dan didn't see a Turner spin rather. Ended up uh, catching just enough of that car. It sent him launching the back stretch as he sideways now off the fourth turn. Lance Raptor had to get on the binders. A good save by both drivers there. As problems on that number 30 car, very loose for uh, Zach Daniels in that number 30. And that allows Brent Jarvis to take over the lead. But Zach Daniels last week took a ride off in the bunker. That car got up on two wheels. Not sure if it ever went over, but got up on two wheels and smacked into the Jersey barriers on the back stretch right around the uh, Capitol off-track betting sign. Out front showing the way is Brent Jarvis in the number 32. It is Josh Terry in the 43 running in second. And Zach Daniels is trying to fight back on the inside. Lance Raptor, the point leader in this division in the, in the uh, 11 car, is snookered behind the 43 of Josh Terry. As that 11 car typically runs well down on the inside of the track. Lance Raptor has had to take it up to the top, and he is gaining no ground. Robert Gordon as well, a car that's been very fast the last couple of weeks, hasn't been able to get towards the front. They've been side by side for much of this qualifier, and those guys that are trying to come from the back haven't had room to go anywhere. Frank Jarvis still showing the way. It is Josh Terry in second on top of the racetrack. Zach Daniels runs in third in the number 30 car. This time around, there's gonna be two laps to go for Brent Jarvis in the number 32 car. 
He sees two to go with a gaggle of cars racing behind him side by side. They're side by side for second and fourth. And that time a bobble for Zach Daniels in the 30 car allows Robert Gordon to think underneath as well as the 11 of Lance Raptoy. Robert Gordon got on the binders, thought better of that move down to the inside. And Zach Daniels will hold on to the third spot. White flag is out one more time around for Brent Jarvis. Lance Raptoy's car is not hooked up well at all on top of the racetrack. Lance Raptoy's car is very loose up on top. Zach Daniels is holding that spot off down on the inside. They drag race into turn number three. And it's still Zach Daniels with that third spot. Here they come off the fourth turn. Brent Jarvis wins it. Josh Terry second. Third Zach Daniels. Fourth will be Lance Raptoy. So for qualifier number one with the Ernie's Discount Tools Modified Division. It's Mike Wells and Leon Gagne the front row. Chris Kay and Vince Quinville the second row. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. Good jump on the top for Leon Gagne on the four. Mike Wells trying to hang down on the bottom of the racetrack. But boy, look at Leon Gagne go. Gagne on that Troyer car vaults off the second turn to the point. Chris Kay in the 18 looks to take his car up to the top of the racetrack. He can't do so. He gets on the brakes and tries to dime in the corner. There's K.A. trying to look underneath Mike Wells in the 76. Wells pushes up the racetrack in turn two. K.A. tries to make it stick. He can't do so. They race wheel to wheel into turn number three. It is Mike Wells still showing the way. Chris K.A. knows he doesn't have to push it. He can easily get by Mike Wells down on the inside with the push that Wells has in turns one and two. He just has to bide his time. There's K.A. thinks about going right now off the second turn. He sticks his nose underneath as they race into turn number three. It's still Wells with the nose out in front. Chris K in the 18 tries to fight down on the inside. It'll be a drag race for the position off the fourth turn. Give it to Chris K. Chris K takes the spot away. Mike Wells still fighting on the top of the racetrack. He loses the spot now up on top. It's Vince Quinville back and forth. Leon Gagno is the leader right now in qualifier number one. It is a pretty good gap back to the 18 of Chris K. And then it is Mike Wells in the 76 and Vince Quinville in the 78. Leon Gagno sits second in points in this Kearney's Discount Tools Modified Division. It's been a while since he's picked up a victory here at the Big A. And I think tonight could be the night for Leon Gagno. He has that car hooked up in front. Gagno turning a 16.21 lap time. Chris Kay in that number 18 car is uh, running in second. Chris Kay in this division runs, sits third in points. No wins on the year for Chris Kay. He sits 23 out of the top spot. It is uh, the 76 of Mike Wells. He finds himself in the ninth spot. He's 127 out. In Vince Quinville, this is his first time campaigning here in the 2014 season. And again, he is just trying to shake out his 602 for when there is a series race for the 602 modified later on in the season. Well, it's Leon Gagno showing the way out front. And he will see the popsicle sticks. Two laps to go for Leon Gagno this time by. Two to go. Leon Gagno in that Wiley Ford, Eaglefield Ford, number four, picking up the left front tire off turns two and four, running a lower line around the racetrack. And perhaps they have keyed in on the setup for this evening as that car appears to be quick at the front. Chris K turning lap times around the 16.5 range, but Leon Gagno still in the 16.2 bracket. And here he comes off the fourth turn. Leon Gagne will win qualifier number one for the Ernie's Discount Tools Modified. Mike Wells and Vince Quinville in number 78 will come around and finish in spot number four. Two. Aaron Bartaby in the three. Greg Atkins in the one New York. Here they come off of turn number four. Green flag is out. Good jump for Barnaby down on the inside. Jesse Mueller goes right with him. Mueller in the 19 to the two spot. It is Barnaby showing the way out in front. Mueller runs in second. Both of these drivers that run one and two picked up victories last week in the three segment races that we had for the Ernie's Discount Tools Modifieds. It was a 76 lap event. Aaron Barnaby in the B3 picked up the win in segment number one. It was Chris Vernal picking up the win in segment number two. Jesse Mueller picked up the win in segment number three. Mueller was the overall winner. He got a $1,000 bonus. A $2,200 payday plus, I believe it might have been uh, $2,350 for Jesse Mueller in that number 19 team. A good payday for him last week here at the racetrack. He had a total of six points after the three segments. A third, a second, and a first for Jesse Mueller. And he runs right on the back bumper of Aaron Bartomey in the B3. Mueller picks up that left front tire off the second turn as they race into turn number three. 
It is Mueller on the top. Now he tries to dime in the corner and come down the inside as they race off the fourth turn. Barnaby still has a spot. Aaron Barnaby, the last couple of weeks he found his way in victory lane, Heck has been thanking his team so much. Oh, Jesse Mueller gets the right side tires off in the bunker. That'll cost him a couple of car lengths. Aaron Barnaby saying how much and how uh, hard they've worked on that race car, how much time they put in that D3 machine, trying to get it fast up to the front, trying to find the extra tenth of a second. And he runs out front with a 16.30 lap. Jesse Mueller in the 16.4 bracket. Remember, in qualifier number one, Leon Gagnon was running in the 16.2, so Leon Gagnon, much the best so far for qualifying action. Here goes Mueller. Mueller trying to look down underneath the Barnaby B3. Mueller can't do it off of turn number two as they race into turn number three. That time around, Jesse Mueller turning a 16.19. Mueller with a fast lap of the night here in the second qualifier. Here goes Mueller this time. They wheel to wheel in turn number two. But here goes Barnaby trying to drive off the top of turn number two. As they race into turn number three. Perhaps they may have touch going into turn number three. It's Barnaby up on top of all. He pushes that up towards the wall this time off the fourth turn. Jesse Mueller comes through on the inside. Barnaby trying to hang with him. He tries to cross over and slot car down on the inside. Can't do it. Jesse Mueller takes the uh, point away. And here comes Barnaby. Barnaby tries to dirt track it down on the inside. He's got to get on the binders, and that will slow his progress. That fly is out one more time around for Jesse Mueller. Jesse Mueller in the number 19 car. Picked up a ton of money last week. And he picks up a heat race victory this week on board Mueller and Sons number 19. Jesse Mueller wins it second. We'll go to Aaron Barnaby. Third will be Greg Atkins, and Andy Haywood will limp his number 80 car around creep in the turn number four. Now they get on it as they're at the line. Green flag is out. Here comes Josh first going out of the pitch with uh, smoke trailing out of the back end of the earnings discount tools number seven. He will have to uh, hope that that car will hold up for him. It doesn't, things don't look well with that number seven car. Meanwhile, out front showing the way is Nick Lagoy in the number seven car. Bucko Branham has moved through down on the inside. Bucko with the second. Here comes Brandon Atkins in the number four. Atkins in that number four car is trying to work his way and tiptoe underneath that three of Danny Sullivan. The black flag is out for Josh LeClaire in the seven car. LeClaire will have to take his seven back to the pits. Meanwhile, side by side for third, Atkins seems to be fighting the handle down on the inside of that number four. That car is loose, but he finds his way by Danny Sullivan. Is Sullivan a bit slow up on top of the racetrack? Bobby T with a bit of a bobble in turns one and two. Therian bobbled and pushed the three of Danny Sullivan up the racetrack a bit, but here comes Therian back down on the inside. Bucko Brandon with a bit of a tap to the back bumper of Nick Lagoy in the number seven car as they drag racing the lead down the first jet. Bucko Branham, the racing professor, down on the inside of Nick Lagoy. These two drivers have a history and they'll now race side by side into turn number three. Bucko Branham in the number 20 has his car down on the inside. It's Lagoy running the top. There he again, drag race off the fourth turn, lead on one another, and they were about dead even at the line, perhaps give it to Lagoy. Here comes Bobby Therian through. Muscling his way by Brandon Atkins in the four. They're still side by side for the point, side by side for third. The top four cars all run side by side. Throw a blanket on those four cars as they drag race to the lead. So there's still Lagoy at the line. Nick Lagoy fighting off Bucko Branham on top of the racetrack. It's Bobby Therrien with a good runoff of turn number two. He's right there on the back bumper of Bucko Branham. Therrien now has to get off it as they race into turn number three. It is the seven of Lagoy up on top of the racetrack. Lagoy still trying to show the way, and he does with Brandon burning the tires up down on the bottom. Brandon Atkins in the number four. Atkins trying to glue himself to the back bumper of Nick Lagoy and go on top of the racetrack, but he can't get the grip. Now Lagoy sticks the nose way out in front, drives it deep in turn number four, hangs it out. Oh boy, look out! Lagoy in the wall, and Lagoy will stop along the front stretch, and we will have he is back out onto the field. Seven in the books, trying to get to 25. All right, here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Good jump down on the bottom for Bucko Brandon in the number 20. Bobby Therrien up on top of the racetrack, drives it hard off of turn number two. Nick Sweet trying to go with him. As they race into turn number three, Branham tries to drive it deep into the corner. Bobby T still up there on the top of the racetrack. Drag race for the lead. Give it to Therrien up on top. Atkins trying to hang on the back bumper of Bucko Branham. Branham drives it deep into one and two. Therrien drives off of turn number two to the point. Bucko Branham, though, was good last time here in turns three and four. Nick Sweet up on top of the racetrack. He's trying to make it stick up on top. He can't do it. Bobby Therrien has the point. 
Bucko Branham in second. But again, Bucko has the nose out in front in turn one. But turn two, Bobby T drives away and has cleared the 20. Therian can now run in whatever line he wants. And Therian will likely elect to go down to the bottom of the racetrack here with Bucko Branham back in the second spot. Nick Sweet, the 88 now, goes up to the top of the racetrack alongside the 20 of Bucko Branham. Atkins has lost a car length off that battle. Atkins is back to fourth. Danny Sullivan runs in fifth. Here goes Nick Sweet on top of the number 88 car. It is the four of Atkins trying to follow along up on top. Marco Branham down on the inside of that number 20 car. Here comes Brandon Atkins. The 88 of Sweet has gone by. Atkins tries to move as well. Atkins on top of that North Line Utilities number four car trying to work his way inside the top three with Branham down on the inside. Still holding up the line, but Atkins coming on strong. Atkins. Hangs it out on the top of the racetrack. Dirt tracks it a bit off of turn number two, but Atkins now has the spot as they race down the back stretch into turn number three. Branham's car going away down on the inside. This time around, we're going to be halfway. It's going to be halfway for Bobby Therrien in the number five. Bobby Therrien here this week in the Subway Five, trying to shake things down for next week's 200 lap ACT race. And he shows the way right now with Nick Sweet, Thunder Road competitor, running in the second spot. Brandon Atkins runs in third with Bucko Branham right behind. Atkins pushes up the racetrack a bit in that number four car. Gets the right side tires off the back stretch. Doesn't uh, harm anything. He still runs a car length ahead of Bucko Branham in the number 20. This time off the fourth turn. Ten laps to go for Bobby Therrien. Ten to go for Therrien in the five Vermont car. Bucko Branham leads this division in points. He has 195 points in one win on the season. The other drivers in this division that have wins. Nick Sweet has two wins. And that is how this division is shaking out. Bucko Branham, the point leader, runs in fourth. Nick Lagoy is set second in points, five out of the top spot. But Lagoy, remember, smacked the wall back on lap number seven. And he is back in the garage area. Third in points is Kevin Booten. Booten is running in last right now on the racetrack, back in position number seven. Booten in that 25 is third. My call is fourth in points. He runs in the five spot, or excuse me, the sixth spot right now. And Danny Sullivan, fifth in points. He runs in the five spot right now. It is still ferrying out in front with Nick Sweet pulling away. The top two guards are pulling away from Brandon Atkins in the four. And Bucko Branham is trying to move past Atkins, number four on the inside. But Branham can't get that grip. Branham needs grip down on the bottom of the racetrack, and he's not getting it. They race this time off of turn number four. Again, Branham looks low. But Atkins has the better drive in the middle top three. Brandon Atkins in the four. Still holds off and runs that middle line. Bucko Branham now that time around actually tried to go the same line as Atkins. See if he can pick something up following Atkins' line around. Maybe his car works a little bit better up on top of the racetrack. Bobby Therrien in the subway car still shows the way. That last lap around, it was five to go for Bobby T with Nick Sweet trying to chase him down in the 88. Well, Nick Sweet picked up the victory this past uh, Thursday at the Thunder Road Speedway. It was a race that uh, Clint Boyer was invited to. And Boyer, I believe, finished a lap down over at the Thunder Road Speedway in the late model division. Here comes Bucko Branham now. He's right on the back door of Brandon Atkins for New York. Atkins in that number four car, slides up the racetrack a bit, but again, anytime Bucko tries to get that car down on the inside in one and two, it washes up on him. Branham's car pushing like a Mack truck in turn number two. It's pretty strong here in three and four, but he can't get the grip off the second turn. Two laps to go for Bobby Therrien in the five Vermont. Therrien in the five will follow him around for his last lap and a half as he races in turns three and four. It's his first regular season visit here to the Big A. He was here earlier with the American Canadian Tour. And he shows the way. Therrien with Nick Sweet, a car length and a half off the back bumper. Shouldn't affect him. Here he goes, turn number three. Nick Sweet trying to close in with a hammer down. It's going to be Bobby Therrien. Nick Sweet second. Third will be Brandon Atkins. Fourth, Rocco Branham. Fifth will be Danny Sullivan. The race for sixth. On
Well, Bobby Therian takes his victory lap around the big eight. in the first of two 20 lap features tonight for the late models. Here he comes out of the car, give him a nice round of applause. It's Bobby Therrien. He wins the first one. Bobby, come on over here so we can get you on camera. Bobby, nice job. Uh, this car seems like it was hooked up down on the bottom in the heat race, but even in the feature, you could put it on the top of the bottom wherever you wanted to, and it seemed pretty strong for you. Okay. Yeah, throughout practice, uh, we made a few changes and got me a lot happier with the car, so that was, that was key. Um, being able to race Buckle there on the restart is awesome. I love racing against him, and uh, especially with a guy like that that has this much history at this track, it's a lot of fun. Um, love running with Nick and uh, Brandon here too, so it's awesome. Obviously, uh, Subway for helping me out, Fast One Motorsports, Pete Dudo, my whole crew, my family. They, uh, without them, it wouldn't be possible, so I appreciate it much. And I know it's a good testing session for you for next week. We plan on seeing you here for the ACT International. After this, I think we got to come back. <laughs> but uh, we, we're looking forward. We'll go in. I got a couple adjustments in mind for the second feature, and uh, we'll see how we can do on that one. Well, nice job, and good luck later on. Thank you. That's Bobby Terry, and he finishes in the top spot. We'll get a word quick with Nick Sweet. Nick Moore. Harold is coming from the back parking lot tonight in that 9X car. All right, here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. Heck of a start for Michael Wright on top of the racetrack. Michael Wright shows the way into turns one and two with Eddie Brissett running in second. It is Mike Whalen up on top of the racetrack in the number 11. He runs in third. Tyler Brissett fourth. Here comes Pete Blaney in the 22B. Look at Stephen Brissett up on top of the racetrack. Oh, but the white flag is out. Or excuse me, the yellow flag is out. A little early to have the white flag out. Now yeah, start to pick up the pace. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. And Mike Wright still gets a good jump up on top of the racetrack, but Eddie Brissett tries to hang with him on the inside. They get shuffled around mid-pack. They straighten their way out, and it's the same as last time. It's Mike Whalen running in third, fourth right now, the 41 of Tim LaFountain with the eight ball, Tyler Brissett down on the inside. Steve Brissett's trying to move up on top of the 14 car. Chris LaVere is pinned down on the inside and at number four. CJ in that four car works underneath the 86 of Demore. Meanwhile, up towards the front, second position, heats up. It is Eddie Brissett up on top. Mike Whalen tries to drive through. They're four wide mid-pack into turn number three. Jay LaGrave quickly got out of there as he worked his way through the middle, with Chris LeVere still down on the bottom trying to gain position. LeVere down on the bottom where he doesn't want to be. That four car is very strong up on top. Jay LaGrave in the 79 pushed bad off of turn number two. That uh, made Stephen Brissett in the 41, or excuse me, the 14 car get on the binders. They're now three wide. Oh boy, look out. Stephen Brissett sideways, and there he goes off the top of turn two. Off the top of turn four, excuse me. And the yellow flag will likely come out as Steven Brissett. Three rows. Let's see how things will shake out. Chris Lavera's been pinned down on the inside in that four. All right, here we go. Off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. Good start on top for Michael Wright. Again, left the 15 of Eddie Brissett standing at the altar. They race down the back stretch, and Mike Whalen will look to take over position number two from the top side. They park the 22B of Pete Blaney with the four of LaVere and the 81 of Richner. Although Pete Blaney stays in the gas and tries to make it work through the inside as he's really rim riding on that 22B. And Richner up on top of the racetrack. Richner in the 81 car. Up on top, tries to knife his way through traffic. He works outside the Blaney 22, gives a bit of a bump to the eight ball of Tyler Brissett down the back stretch. Helps him out, makes him a little bit faster as they race in a turn three. Three wide with LaVere down on the bottom. Problems for the 66 of Robert Foley. Foley is up off the top of turns three and four. He will likely stay parked there with the uh, pace he is at. And he keeps it going down the front stretch and will stay in the green momentarily. Meanwhile, three wide down the back stretch. Richner's lost a spot to the four, to the, uh, four car. Oh boy, look out. Harold LeVere got a piece of Scott Richner and they go around. Harold LeVere will keep his spot in the 9X. All right, ready to go. Eddie Brissett's got to be better on the restart this time. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out, and he's still asleep. 
Michael Wright still getting the jump up on top of the racetrack. And he will put that 78 in the lead. Eddie Brissett's got to get better on that restart. Well, here's what will be interesting. Watch Scott Richner work his way through the field. Richner is in the middle right now. He's a meat in the sandwich, working between the 79 and 22 car. Blaney on the bottom, LaGrave on the top. Richner in the meat in the sandwich as he's trying to get back to the front. Richner, again, sticks his nose in the middle, and he's trying to thread the needle in that 81 car, working his way back to the front of the racetrack. Meanwhile, it's still Michael Wright showing the way out in front. Stephen Brissett moving down on the inside with a 14 car. Brissett is the point leader, a 29-point lead in this division. Chris LeVere in the four tries to work his way around the 41 of Tim LaFountain. LaFountain in the 41 pushes up in turn number two. LeVere tries to get it to stick down on the inside. Can't do it just yet. Here comes Richner. Richner thinking three wide through the middle. He and uh, Harold are side by side. I wonder if a, a bit of a wave will be given or uh, anything considered by Richner. No, Richner's just going to blow by him. Richner blows by on the outside. LeVere back to position number six. Richner into the top five. Here comes C.J. LeVere. He looks down underneath Tim LaFountain's 41 car as they power into turn number three. Richner running up on top in the 81. He's gone from last all the way up to the top five in just a matter of three laps as Richner is now right behind the four with uh, C.J. LeVere. Richner may very well win this race as here he goes. He's hooked up off the second turn. Scott Richner in that number 81 car all the way up to third now down on the inside. C.J. LeVere in the four, tries to get it down on top of the racetrack. Halfway this time by as uh, 20 laps tonight. The uh, mini modifieds are going to go to. The schedule says 15. The mini mods will go to 20, and now they're going to 20 laps. Scott Richard will have no problem winning this race, barring some type of mechanical failure on that 81 car. Speaking of a mechanical failure, there goes Robert Foley in the 66. He'll take that car pit side. And he may be done for the evening. Here comes Richner. Richner's up to second. Ed Brissett right now runs in third. We'll call him Fast Eddie. That car's been pretty good for uh, Ed Brissett tonight. So Fast Eddie runs in third. But here comes C.J. LeVere. And, uh, well, Michael Wright, here comes the other Bolak excavation car. That's Scott Richner in the 81. Scott Richner's right there off the back bumper. A car length away as they race down the front stretch. And it's still Mike Wright's lead at the line. C.J. LeVere is now pulled even with Ed Brissett. And he works his way down through on the inside. Oh, they play bumper tag mid-pack. The 22B of Blaney got into the back bumper of Harold LeVere. And the 11 of Whalen got into the back bumper of the 14 of Stephen Brissett. Oh, there goes Tim LaFountain in the 41. He's off the pace, and he loops it on top of turn number four. His teammate was just up there a few laps ago. That will likely bring out a yellow flag. Although uh, he keeps it going. Here comes Tim LaFountain. He's back on track with that four, uh, 41 car. And we stay under green. Meanwhile, it's still Michael Wright showing the way out front. C.J. Lavera is coming in the number four car. Scott Richner runs in the second spot. Is Richner waiting for the right opportunity? This time they race off the second turn. And Richner still runs behind Michael Wright in the 78. Richner's car was so strong moving through the field. You wonder if he's waiting as they come this time with five to go. Five laps to go for Michael Wright. C.J. LeVere looks down on the inside with a four car, and you know what that means. It's time to go for Scott Richner. Richner in that 81 car has to get moving because C.J. LeVere is right there. If, it, if Richner's got a card to play, now's the time to do so. They race in turns three and four. Off the fourth turn, it's still Michael Wright showing the way. And Scott Richner running in second. C.J. LeVere takes that four up to the top of the racetrack. Now he tries to dime in the corner. This time by, Scott Richner sees the hole. He tries to fill it down to the bottom. He can't do so. Michael Wright still has the advantage going into three. Scott Richner now loses a spot to C.J. LeVere. Richner losing a spot, perhaps a tire going down or an issue with uh, the Richner number 81. As Richner now side by side with C.J. LeVere. Michael Wright, meanwhile, still hanging on out in front. <laughs> Scott Richner giving him a bump draft down the back stretch in at turn number three. I wonder if Scott Richner is rooting for Michael Wright to win this race. Popsicle sticks her out. Two laps to go this time by for Michael Wright, but here comes C.J. LeVere. C.J. LeVere in the number four has worked his way by down on the inside. Oh, boy, look out. Eddie Brissett got a piece of Scott Richner in the 81. It's C.J. LeVere to the point. Harold LeVere predicted this at the beginning of the night. Harold said he's got the car to beat. Oh, boy, look out. Michael Wright in the 78. 
He goes off the top of turn number three with the white flag out and one to go. Try to catch up to the tail end of the field. C.J. LeVair on the bottom. Scott Richner in the 81 on the top. What will C.J. LeVair try to do here on the restart? All right, here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. Boy, a heck of a jump for C.J. down on the inside. Will it stand? The green flag is out and the yellow flag is out quickly. All right, here we go. 18 in the books. Two laps to go. It'll be a green, white, checkered finish. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is back out and they're sideways and touching already at the start. Harold Lever tried to cut down to the inside and he made contact with a 15 of Ed Brissett. Oh boy, look out. They play uh, slot, they slam each other going down the back stretch. Slot car race to the front. The leader is now Scott Richner. As they, bu they bump and bang mid-pack, Eddie Brissett in the 15 is being washed all the way to the back of the racetrack. White flag is out. Three wide down the front stretch, leaning on one another. Out front, it is Scott Richner in the 81. And running in second, C.J. LeVere. Oh, bad news for Ed Brissett. He's way out to the back of the field now. Here they come off the fourth turn. The winner is going to be the 81 of Scott Richner. C.J. LeVere second, third Steve Brissett, fourth Harold LeVere, fifth Pete Blaney. Sixth will be the eight of Tyler Brissett, seventh Michael Wright, eighth. So Scott Richner will take his victory lap around the Big A on board the number 81 car. Home the 14 and third tonight. CJ Lavera is out of his car. He brings the four home in second. But the 81 was hooked up once again. Scott Richner picks up win number three of the year. And he is climbing out of the Bolak excavation. Bushy's auto repair number 81. Give him a nice round of applause. Here's Scott Richner. He picks up win number three. Scott, you know the deal. Come on over. Let's get you on camera. Well, this one wasn't easy by any means. You had to work for it. You might have had a little bit of help in turn number three. But boy, this car was hooked up again. You could put it on the top. You could put it in the middle. You could put it down on the bottom. It was hooked up. Yeah, uh, this thing was a rocket tonight. No matter where I put it, it went. Uh, I don't even know what happened in turn three, but all it did was make me race harder. <laughs> And I know, certainly for you, you've said so many times that you really haven't had to change much of the setup. Just if something breaks here and there, you got to do that. But this car is still pretty much the same way it was set up for Jason Chris last year. Am I right? Uh, yeah, pretty much everything's the same. Uh, actually, we almost didn't make it to the track today. I had to change a bunch of stuff last minute, and I had a hard time getting parts and stuff. But I got it together and uh, ended up being a good night. Uh, i got to thank Whalen Engineering for sponsoring the night. And uh, my sponsor is Bolak Excavating and Bushy's Auto Repair. Scott, nice job with number three. Thank you. 2 0 for Robert Gordon. The 71 is Hunter Sawyer, and the 2 is Metal Man. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. Brent Jarvis in the number 32 takes the advantage on the top of the racetrack. Dylan Raptoy gets a piece of him. He gets sideways. Jarvis has the lead as they race down the back stretch. Also moving on the inside, Sean Duquette, the 18. Duquette forcing the issue early down on the bottom. Here comes McKiernan. McKiernan powers through down on the bottom of the racetrack as Raptoy back starting on the top of the 22. Boy, Josh Terry snookered behind in that 43 car trying to find a way by as they're nearly four wide in the second turn. Sean Duquette sideways. They play bumper tag down the back stretch. And who gets the worst of that? Josh Terry. Josh Terry backsliding on the top of the racetrack simply because he's stuck out behind the car on the, uh, the top of the 22 of Raptoy. But Raptoy's got it going now. Raptoy struggled early on that first lap. He was sideways, but now he's got it going in the four spot. Terry is now moving back in that 43 car. Lance Raptoy has separated himself from the 19 of Jamie Bigor. Bigor in that number 19 runs a bottom groove on the racetrack. Out front, Trent Jarvis showing the way. It's John running in second. is McKiernan in the double nickel. Then it is Sean Duquette in the number 18. Duquette still looking to pick up his first victory of the year in that number 18 machine. Running in the four spot, it is the 22 of Raptor, but here comes Ryan Booten. Ryan Booten moving through down on the inside. Ryan Booten will take over spot number four, with Josh Carey right on the back bumper. 
Josh Terry in the 43, tries to inch pass down on the bottom of the racetrack. The 22 of Dylan Raptoy slides back on the top. Rich Lowey the third also trying to work down on the bottom. As now here comes Jamie Beagle in the 19, the last on top of the racetrack, and Raptoy down on the bottom. We saw Lance Raptoy's number 11 car try to work down, uh, excuse me, try to work on the top of the racetrack in his heat race. That car was bad for him up on top. Jamie Beagle is now up on top, and Raptoy is back where he wants to be, but there is traffic in front of him. Zach Daniels in the 30 is in front of him and running the bottom groove up in front. Side by side for position number four. It's Josh Terry on the bottom and Ryan Booten up on top of the racetrack. So side by side, door to door into turn number three. Same for position number six. It's Billy Twaits on the bottom and Rab Toy on the top. That's the battle for six, the battle for four. It's Josh Terry on the bottom and the 28 of Booten up on top. Give that spot to Josh Terry. Josh Terry in the 43, hanging on as they race side by side. Throw a blanket on the top three cars as they pulled away from the field. 32 of Jarvis, 55 of Jim McKiernan, and the 18 of Sean Duquette. They run one, two, three, strung out away from the field. And they're side by side, still for fourth, with Josh Terry hanging on down on the bottom. They play to move through now for position number six. Rich Lowey III is also trying to move through on the inside as well. Beagle is backsliding in that number 19 car. Beagle has lost two spots now, running on top of the racetrack. He's now pulled down underneath the H2O of Robert Gordon. Igor talked to him earlier in the day, wasn't really sure about the setup of that car. And they appear to be struggling right now with the setup on that 19, although they are in heavy traffic. Igor in the 19 works down underneath Zach Daniels in the number 30 car. Problems last week between those two drivers. As they play bumper tag in turn number three, Lance Raptoy in the 11 gets into the back of the 99 of Lowry. That allows the H2O of Rob Gordon to come through down on the inside. But Gordon tries to move through. And the 11 of Lance Raptoy tries to get back down on the inside, but he can't as J.B. Igor is there. Beagle in the 19 races side by side with the 11 of Raptoy. They bump down the back stretch as Raptoy tries to cut Beagle down and take his racing room away. Beagle in the 19, down on the bottom, tries to keep the foot in it, but Raptoy maintains the spot up on top. And again, B and again, Raptoy, the racing veteran, trying to cut down Beagle and take away that racing room as Beagle runs down on the bottom of the racetrack. Lance Raptoy up on top. He has Dylan Raptoy up in front of him. He's going to have to try and set the needle. And here goes Beagle through to that spot. And Raptoy will follow in behind Jamie Beagle. Rob Gordon is side by side with Lowry's number 99 car. Gordon has been stout in that H2O car the last few weeks. But right now, he is sluggish, trying to gain ground down on the bottom of the racetrack. It is Lowry up on the top, but Rob Gordon's going to come through without a problem. 13 laps in, let's set the field. Brent Jarvis is the leader. Jim McKiernan runs in second. Sean Duquette is third. Josh Terry fourth. Fifth is Ryan Booten. Sixth is the number four, Billy Clay. Rob Gordon is seventh. Rich Lowry is eighth. Ninth is Jamie Begor. And tenth right now is Lance Raptoy. Dylan Raptoy, 11th. Twelfth is the 30 of uh, Zach Daniel. 13th, John Booten, 23. 14th, Tyler Terry in the 44. 15th right now, Richie Turner in the 57. 16th, the 12 of a Zach Raptoy. 17th to 19 Vermont. That is Ray Germain. 18th is the 5 of Scott Fitzgerald. 19th Hunter Sawyer. Halfway in this TRD trailer sales Renegade 30 lap feature. And there's Brent Jarvis showing the way right now out front with Jim McKiernan right there on the back bumper and Sean Duquette pressing on the back bumper of McKiernan. Passing flag shown for Hunter Sawyer in the 71 car. Sawyer will take that 71 down to the bottom of the racetrack and stay out of harm's way. Nice job by Hunter to keep that car down to the bottom. Jarvis works his way around with McKiernan. A couple of car lengths back, and then Duquette has been all over the back bumper of Jim McKiernan. McKiernan this time looks to the top of the racetrack. Duquette sees the hole down on the bottom. Duquette trying to come through for the second spot on the inside. Sean Duquette in the number 18 tries to inch his way through down on the bottom. They're side by side off the second turn. Off of two, Duquette six nose out in front. They bobble a bit off the second turn. They race wheel to wheel side by side. A lap car up in front may pick Sean Duquette's number 18. As here they come out the fourth turn. Duquette's gonna go way down to the inside and that's gonna snooker him. Duquette got snookered by the lap car down to the bottom. Duquette was racing side by side with McKiernan. McKiernan able to take him away on top and Duquette with uh, a strange move down to the inside of the lap car. I thought he had plenty of room to go and fit through up on the right side of the lap car. But Duquette elected to go way down underneath, and that cost him a spot. Duquette back to position number three. Brent Jarvis still shows the way. 
Jarvis taking the lead on lap number one and running away with this one. He's going to see 10 fingers from Chief Starter Jason Lemoy. 10 laps to go for Brent Jarvis, who has led this run so far from the start. Field is now strung out. As right now, the top five cars run the 32 of Jarvis, 55 McKiernan, 18 Duquette, 43 Terry, and 28 Ryan Booten. That's how they run. Here they come off the fourth turn. Battle for the lead heats up. McKiernan's trying to look underneath the 32 of Jarvis. What's he got? Again, McKiernan digging down on the bottom of the racetrack. Here comes Sean Duquette. Sean Duquette wants to go down on the bottom of the racetrack. Duquette can't quite get there. As McKiernan shuts the doors, they're now even in turn number three. McKiernan gets on the brakes. He's a little bit sideways in three and four. Jarvis still holding him off at the line. Grant Jarvis still hanging on on top of the racetrack, but perhaps that car is starting to go away. Now Sean Duquette trying a bit up on top of the racetrack. He had McKiernan down on the bottom earlier, but now he's got to go to the top as McKiernan's grooved down to the bottom. Sean Duquette in the Roto Rooter number 18. Wheel to wheel, door to door off the fourth turn. Who's going to have the second spot? Sean Duquette at the line. Sean Duquette perhaps by inches. It was very close, but they still battled door to door off the second turn. Duquette has the nose out in front down the back stretch. Jarvis has pulled away to a two car length advantage while these guys fight side by side. He doesn't mind seeing that go on. That allows him to drive away. It's now three car lengths as they race down the front stretch. McKiernan sideways off the fourth turn. Easy time that uh, corner for Sean Duquette in the 18. He takes the two spot away because now he has clear track. Duquette can run in whatever lane he wants. This time around, it's going to be five laps to go for Brent Jarvis in the 32. Five laps to go this time by a wave of the hand from Chief Starter Jason Lemoy. Frank Jarvis is out front. Sean Duquette is right there on the back bumper. Now one car length after turn two as Duquette worked those regular tires and dirt track that 18 of it. It is Brent Jarvis showing the way. Sean Duquette right there off the back bumper. Duquette is good in turns three and four. Can he make it stick? No, he can't that time, but Duquette's going to follow right around on the back bumper. Duquette is there now in turn number one. He's going to look underneath in turn number two. Can Duquette get it to stick? Yes, he can. A good run that time off of turn number two. Look at Duquette go down the back stretch in turn number three. Duquette has the nose out in front in turn three. Wheel to wheel, side by side off of turn number four. Oh boy, problems on Terry's 43. He's off the pace. As the leaders are still door to door, side by side. Sean Duquette that time at the line by inches. Sean Duquette now has the nose out in front. Josh Terry with a right rear flat. He'll take it back to the pitch. Brent Jarvis back to second now. Here comes Jim McKiernan trying to work through for a second on the inside. He has the spot now off of the fourth turn. Fighting back is Jarvis on the top. Two laps to go for Sean Duquette with Jim McKiernan in second. Jim McKiernan's in second and look who's worked his way right up to the top. Robert Gordon in the H2O has his hat in the mix. Jim McKiernan works his way by for second. McKiernan has secured that second spot right now. Here comes Rob Gordon. White flag is out this time around. One more time around for Sean Duquette. Sean Duquette in the 18 worked hard for this one. He was biding time behind the 32, was patient, and finally stepped on it and went. Sean Duquette shows away. Jim McKiernan in second right now. Can Rob Gordon get there for second? Sean Duquette, here he comes. He's going to pick up win number one in 2014. Second, Jim McKiernan. Third, Rob Gordon. Fourth, Frank Jarvis. Fifth, Brian Newton. Sixth, Jamie Beagle. Seventh to the four of Keith Pelkey. Or excuse me, the four of Billy Twaits. Eighth, we'll go to Lance Radtoy in the 11th. Ninth, Rick Lowry in 10th. It was close, I believe. Zach Daniels on the top in the number 30 car. Boy, what a race for Sean Duquette. He finally picks up win number one of 2014, and we'll go. Certainly very excited inside this number 18 machine with a burnout up in turn number one. Give him a nice round of applause. He's out of the car. Sean Duquette. He wins it tonight. Sean, come on over.
We'll get you. We'll get you on camera. You're parked in a little bit awkward spot, but we'll get you on camera here. Come on down, boy, Sean. You've been working hard all season long, and it's finally here. And this car was strong tonight. You, it seemed like you were patient, waiting behind the 32 for the right opportunity. And at one point, you were inside the 5 of Jim McKiernan, and that lap car was definitely inside. You tried going underneath. That didn't work too well for you, but you worked your way right back to the front. This car was very strong tonight. Yeah, actually, we finally figured the bugs out. It finally, um, yeah, I seen that lap car. I didn't know which way he was going. He didn't know. I took the inside. It was a bad move, but I knew that the 32 and the, um, the 55 car were going away, so I was just waiting, waiting, and finally I got my chance. Yeah, and I think that was the key to this race. You didn't really push it too hard. You waited for that opportunity, and you knew you had it here when you could whip it at the end. Yeah, with these brakes, they're small brakes. If you push it too hard at the beginning, you lose at the end. So that's what I did. Well, it's been a long time coming. Win number one. You've been working hard. Congratulations, Sean Duquette. It must feel great. It feels awesome. Thank you. That's right, Sean Duquette. He wins tonight. First win of the year. We'll talk with... Uh, Ready to go. Here they come off the fourth turn. Danny Sullivan, Brandon Atkins, 3-4. Set to go. Green flag is out. Sullivan had the advantage at the line, but here comes Atkins on the top of the racetrack as he vaults to the lead with that number four car, and Nick Sweet's looking to go with him. Nick Sweet atop the racetrack in that 88 car, looking to move as well up on top of the racetrack. Danny Sullivan trying to fight back on the inside, got a piece of Atkins number four. Atkins to the point, he leads lap number one. Brandon Atkins shows the way on lap number one. Nick Sweet coming by on the top of the racetrack. Here goes Bucko Branham trying to throw the needle down on the bottom. Bobby Therrien had to get on the brakes as Danny Sullivan Drifted up the racetrack and cut away some racing room for the five of Therrien. And here comes Bucko Branham to the third spot down on the bottom. Brandon Atkins shows the way in the four car. Nick Sweet runs in second. Bucko Branham in third. Here comes Bobby Therrien in the five Vermont car. Therrien in the number five. Works his way to the inside of Sullivan. Sullivan works his way down back to spot number five. Sullivan from first to fifth. In a matter of three laps. Here goes Terrian trying to dig underneath the Professor Bucko Branham. Here he is in turn number three, wheel to wheel, door to door. They race in turns three and four. We heard Austin, uh, excuse me, Bobby Terrian talk about how much he enjoyed racing against Bucko Branham. Well, he's got plenty right now as they race side by side off the second turn. Bobby Therrien down on the bottom, Bucko Branham up on the top. They race side by side into turn number three. It is the, still the five of Bobby Lanier. Bobby Therrien down on the inside. Bucko Branham up on top of the racetrack of the 20, now drops back to position number four. The field now strung out on the raceway as Atkins still shows the way in the number five car. Atkins out front leading Nick Sweet in the number 88. It is Atkins in that number four car. Nick Sweet runs in second, a couple of car lengths off the back bumper, and then it's about seven or eight car lengths back to Bobby Therrien in the number five. And then it's two back to Bucko Branham in the number 20. A number of these drivers will be competing next week in the ACT Invitational, or excuse me, ACT International 300. It'll be a 200 lap race for the American Canadian Tour cars. Also, in action will be the Airborne Sports and Modifieds and the Thunder Road Tiger Division. But these late model cars will be the main event. They will run 200 laps in segment races next weekend. And these drivers are tuning up this week, hoping that they can key in on setups for next weekend's 200 lap event. Next week, running behind Brandon Atkins, number four car, trying to find a way around. Brandon Atkins running lap times in the 17.5 bracket. He right now is the quickest car on the racetrack. Only five of these late model cars have transponders. The 88 of Nick Sweet and the five of Bobby Therrien. Neither car has a transponder because where they race on a regular basis, they don't require transponders. They typically race over at Thunder Road. Thunder Road has everything hand scored and they don't run with a transponder scoring system. Most of the drivers don't have the scoring monitors. Bucko, Branham, Danny Sullivan, Kevin Booten, and Mike Hall all have one in their car as they is are airborne regulars. Well, it is still Brandon Atkins in the four New York showing the way. Atkins in that four car we talked earlier on in victory lane, and he told me they were a little bit free in the middle of the corner. He was fighting and wrestling that number four car. 
Here they come, they're at the halfway point, and Brandon Atkins shows the way. He was saying that car was free in the middle, and they needed to work on that setup and get it a little bit better here. Mainly, they were trying to dial in the car for next weekend. Nick Sweet is right there on the back bumper. Nick Sweet's now going to look low off the fourth turn, but Atkins still shows the way in the North Line Utilities number four. Nick Sweet now uh, backing up a little bit. Half a car length now off the back bumper. A good corner number two for Brandon Atkins in the four. Bobby Therrien in that number five car. Now has about a four car length disadvantage to that second spot. Now make it five or six off the fourth turn. And Therrien had to get on the brakes. Might have been a little bit hot in turn three and four. Much better turn, time, that to time off the turn number two for the 88 of Sweet. Sweet now just a half a car length after the back bumper of the four of Atkins. Atkins still holding him off in that number four car. Atkins turning a lap time that time around on the 17.673. That number four car slowing down a bit for Brandon Atkins. Nick Sweet is still there off the back bumper. But again, Atkins gets a good run off the second turn. Nick Sweet much better in three and four. Here he comes this time around. Nick Sweet still off the back bumper. Perhaps going to try a high move around in turn number one. Nick Sweet just following around Atkins in that number four car. Sweet in the 88X, the St. Jay's Auto Group machine, is going to look high going into turn number three. Now he brings it right back down to the bottom. Trying to dime in the corner and slingshot around the four of Atkins. Can Atkins get the car back down to the bottom? Yes. Atkins with enough time down the front stretch, gets the car down to the bottom of the racetrack, and another good run off the second turn. A bit of a bobble that time for the St. Jay's Auto Group 88 for Sweet. That allows Atkins to pull out a car length ahead. Bobby Therrien is definitely reeling in the two leaders, the four of Atkins and the 88 of Sweet, as Therrien now just five. They get four into turn number one. Car lengths off the back of the 88 of Sweet. Marco Branham not gaining any ground. He runs in position number four. Danny Sullivan fifth. Six is Kevin Booten and Mike Hall. He is in seventh with the 0-9, the passing flag being shown to Mike Hall. Five laps to go this time around for Brandon Atkins in that number four car. The lap car of Hall will take it up to the top of the racetrack, and Brandon Atkins will quickly take that four down to the inside. Nick Sweet is right there as well, right off the back bumper. Here comes Bobby Therrien now. Therrien now just a couple of car lengths off the back bumper. The 88 of Sweet, but again, Therrien struggles in turn four. Therrien is very strong in one and two. Off of the turn number four, that car is giving the five fits. Atkins still shows the way out in front. He's strong in that number four car. And he's just got to keep the 88 of Nick Sweet behind him for a couple more laps. In turns one and two, Nick Sweet takes the 88 up to the top of the racetrack. He's going to try to high groove around the racetrack this time as they race into turn number three. Sweet trying to see what he has up on top. It's the four of Atkins down on the bottom. Here comes Sweet. Two laps to go for Brandon Atkins in the four. Brandon Atkins in the four that time with a half a car length advantage at the line over the 88 of Sweet. Sweet tried to go to the top of the racetrack that time around. It didn't work for him. What's he going to do this time? Going to be one lap to go. White flag is out for Brandon Atkins as he comes around. One more to go for Brandon Atkins. Atkins has shown the way from the start. Lap one to 24. Can he lead lap number 25, the important one? He dirt tracks it a bit off of turn number two. Sweet is there right underneath. As they race into turn number three, Nick Sweet tries to get there. Atkins just has to stay clean and keep that car down on the inside. Here he comes. Brandon Atkins wins it. Nick Sweet second. Third body carry. And fourth is Buckle Branham. Fifth will be Mike Hall Jr. Sixth. Excuse me. Fifth will be Danny Sullivan. Sixth will go to... finishes, but here's Brandon Atkins. He wins the second 25 lap feature. Brandon, come on over. Brandon, come on right over here so we get you on camera. Well, Brandon, it helps when you start in row number one, but yeah. the car's got to be fast as well, and you got to maintain it. And for you, this car was very strong, much better than uh, the first feature, I thought. It got, had to have felt real strong in the turn for you, and it's got to be nice to pick up win number one on the year. Oh yeah, first win on the year. Uh, we've come close a lot of times, had three or four seconds already this year. Been so close so many times. Uh, feels really nice to finally get to carry the checkered, but uh, still got a little bit more left to go if we want to win it next week. 
and I know you and your team have been working so hard and, and you're getting that much closer and it's just a matter of getting that extra 10th for next weekend, right? Yeah, just a little bit more, but you got to keep digging for it. Next weekend's going to be a hard weekend. Well, Brandon, nice job and good luck next weekend. Thank you. I, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Northline, Boynton Builders, Milwaukee Tools, and uh, NECA and NEAT 1968. Brandon, nice job. Win number one of the year. Thank you. On the back stretch, Mike Wells, Greg Atkins, the front row, Chris K.A., Aaron Barnaby, second row, Leon Gagno, Mike, uh, Andy Haywood, Jesse Mueller, Vince Quindle. Here they come off the full turn three, flag is out. Mike Wells shows the way in the 76, and he took up a lot of racetrack. Boy, look out, they're sideways off the second turn. Greg Atkins was sideways in the one New York as uh, the B3 of Aaron Barnaby got a piece of that one New York car, boxed up the outside lane after the start. Mike Wells took that 76 right up to the wall and took the lane away from Greg Atkins. Out front it is still the 76 of Mike Wells as the lights begin to turn on here along the front stretch and on the back stretch. A miracle worker tonight, We're able to get the lights on and we are still racing here. The rear needs his jump tools modified. Mike Wells showing away, Leon Garner was quick in practice. He was quick in his qualifier, and he's quick right now as he works on top of the racetrack. Leon Gagno turns a 16.35 that last time around working on top of the racetrack. It is Mike Wells showing the way. You've got to be careful here against the wall. Here comes Leon Gagno, and Gagno has a lead at the line. Leon Gagno in the angle field for number four shows the way down the back stretch. He goes to the point of 16.4 that time around as Gagno is trying to work the rim on top. Jesse Mueller right now pinned behind the 18 of Chris K. Okay, and the 18 runs in third. Mueller looks to dime in the corner and get underneath. He is able to do so as they race down the back stretch with Wells right now in second. K.A. up on top. Leon Gagno showing the way in the four car. Lifts that left front tire right up off the wall down the front stretch. And he is beginning to pull away out in front. Jesse Mueller right now in the number 19. Pinned behind the 76 of Wells and the 18 of Chris K.A. They race side by side. Mueller tries to find a way around, and it's Wells down on the inside giving way to K.A. as K.A. takes a second spot away, and Mueller now comes to it well. Mueller the third in the Mueller and sends number 19. K.A. right now in second, but Mueller looks now on the top of the racetrack. Now he's gonna try to dive in the corner, get underneath Chris K.A. That doesn't work. K.A. runs the middle line, and K.A. holds him off. Now it's running his Leon Gagno. The battle for second now heats up. Chris K in the 18, Jesse Mueller in the 19. They race side by side. Mueller up on top, K down on the bottom. K has got to get the, on the binder sooner. And Mueller takes the spot away up on top of the racetrack. Jesse Mueller to the second spot. He is going to have to lot, try and run down Leon Gagno out front. We'll take a look at the lap times. Leon Gagno that time around the 16.22. Last time for Jesse Mueller is 16.27. Five one thousandths of a second difference for those two drivers. And Jesse Mueller is going to have to work his way to the front, although that time Jesse Mueller attempted a second quicker. So at that pace, Jesse Mueller shouldn't have too much of an issue trying to get to the front. Problems on Greg Atkins, one New York. Atkins takes that one New York back to the garage area. He will likely see the rest of this race from the staging area. Out front, it is still Gagno. Gagno, a 16-3 that time. Jesse Mueller is 16-1. Mueller two tenths of a second quicker than Gagno. It's only a matter of time. But you have to wonder, Gagno, the racing veteran, is he trying to save that car? It doesn't appear as though Gagno is pushing that car as much as he typically would. He's lifting that left front tire off the racing surface as he has been all night long. They thought they hit on a good setup with the uh, Gagno number four car. As he works his way through the corners. Leon Gagno. At lap number 12, shows the way with Jesse Mueller, now five car lengths away. Mueller is really pushing that to number 19 machine, but Gagno, it appears, slowing in the corner. Gagno a 16.5, Mueller a 16.2. It doesn't appear as though that car is up to par for Gagno unless he's saving something. Perhaps Gagno is saving until he knows Jesse Mueller is there, and then Gagno going to whip the horse. But Gagno has to pick up the pace. 16.39 that time for Gagno. 16.34 for Jesse Mueller. Gagno steps it up just a bit. But the 19 of Mueller now drawing within one car length. This time around, it's going to be halfway for Shazie's Leon Gagno. Gagno is halfway. And if Mueller keeps up that pace, Gagno is going to have to try and make that car as wide as he can. Here goes Mueller. Mueller tries to go off of turn number two. He's got to get on the binders. Is Gagno washed up the racetrack a bit in turn two? Here comes Mueller in the number 19. Gagno's got to know he's there by now after that look off of turn two, and Gagno punches it. 
Daniel tries to keep the car down on the inside. Here comes Jesse Mueller. Mueller side by side with Gagno. Gagno down on the bottom, tries to power into turn number three. Mueller up on top of the racetrack in the number 19 machine. It is a drag race to the lead off the fourth turn. Gagno still got it. That time around, Gagno a 16-4, Mueller a 16-3-7. Gagno's car not up to par as they race wheel to wheel into turn number three. Gagno has his car down on the bottom with a lap car up in front of him. It's Vince Quinville. Quinville in the number 78 machine up in front of the leaders. Quinville and Mueller have bad blood over at Devilsville Speedway. They aren't too pleased with one another. A couple of weeks back, Jesse Mueller ended up getting the black flag for contact with Vince Quinville. He, right now, is a lap car up ahead. He sees the passing flag, and Vince Quinville will get his 78 machine out of the way. Gagno still trying to fight back on the bottom of the racetrack. Mueller is up on top. Jesse Mueller in this division has picked up three wins on the year. He's looking for win number four tonight. Jesse Mueller going to get pinned behind that lap car right now. Here comes the four of Gagno back through down on the inside. Gagno is there, and he takes the lead back. Leon Gagno takes the lead back, and he sets the pick. Nice veteran move there by Leon Gagno on the number four, setting the pick on the 70, uh, using the 78 to set the pick on the 19 of Mueller. Ten laps to go for Shazie's Leon Gagno. Here goes Mueller looking at the top once again. Gagno's going to try and get that car to the top of the racetrack and run a middle groove because Mueller is so strong out there. Here is Gagno. Gagno still tries to keep that car down on the bottom, and he keeps it there, but Mueller is moving on the top of the racetrack. 16.55 for Gagno, 16.42 for Mueller. Here goes Mueller off the top of turn number two. He's going to rock it down the back stretch. Side by side, wheel to wheel into turn number three. Mueller's up on top, Gagno down on the bottom. Gagno tries to hold him off. What's going to happen off the fourth turn? Give the lead to Mueller at the strike. Mueller with the lead at the strike. Gagno down on the bottom. He's way and Gagno now to the second spot, although he's fighting back in turn number three. Mueller keeps that number 19 up on top of the racetrack, and Gagno tries to fight back. Can he do it? No, it's still Mueller by inches at the line. Gagno not going away though down on the inside with that four car. Although a bad time that time in two. Gagno got the left side tires down in the grass on the inside. That cost him a car like Mueller trying to hang on to the lead. He does so off the fourth turn with five laps to go for Jesse Mueller. Leon Gagno it looked like he might have had the car to beat, but with 12 laps to go, the four machine started going away on him. It appeared that car didn't want to go through the corners as well as Mueller's number 19. And Mueller, for some reason, is hanging it out on the top of the racetrack, cooking that right rear tire. Mueller trying to get it done in the top lane. And through lanes one and two, through turns one and two, he tries to dive in the corner. But up in turn number three, he's way up on top trying to hang it out. Mueller in the 19 comes off the fourth turn, and he still shows the way, increasing his lead over the four of Leon Gagno. Running in third, it is uh, the 18 of Chris Kaye. It is a good distance back to Mike Wells. We've got five car lengths. And then another five car lengths back to Aaron Bartomey in the B3. Behind them, the next car running on the lead lap will be Andy Haywood. And then it is the uh, next car in line, the 78 of Vince Quinville. All right, Pops will stick it out two more times around. Appears problems on the 18 of Chris Kaye. Kaye's 18 machine has slowed down, but the white flag is out this time around for Jesse Mueller, number 19. Chris K in the 18 really fighting the handle on that car, trying to hold off the 76 of Wellesley for the third spot. But here comes tonight's winner, win number four on the season for Jesse Mueller. Off the fourth turn, Jesse Mueller wins it. Second, Leon Gagno. The race for third ongoing, it's going to be Aaron Barnaby in the B3. Fourth will go to the 76 of Mike Wells. Chris K will be fifth after he broke. Sixth will uh, end up. Leon Gagno brings home the Egglefield Ford number four in second tonight. And Jesse Mueller picks up win number four of the year on board the Mueller and Sons heavy duty towing and recovery number 19. He is about to hop out of this 19 machine. All right, here he is giving a round of applause, Jesse Mueller. He hops out.
win number all right, come on over, Jesse. Let's get you on camera here. Boy, this car was very strong. And in a scary moment there early, uh, or excuse me, later on in the race with uh, lap car Vince Quinville, Leon Gagne, the racing veteran, he knows the moves. He was able to box you in behind Vince Quinville, who was running up on top of the racetrack. But after that, you were able to recover fine. This car was very strong tonight. Yeah, I really got to thank Leon. That was just an awesome, fun race. Probably one of the most fun I've had all year, side by side like that. Just for those to prove you can race side by side with these. You just got to have respect for one another. And I was just glad to be back, fourth win of the season. My dad with Mueller and Sons, the support's awesome. We were down in Stafford last night. Uh, Liquor and Wine Warehouse, McMillan Construction, Fryhofer's Eric and Sherry Laundry. just glad to be back. Jesse, nice job. You're really getting used to this deal here in Victory Lane. Four wins, certainly a great season so far for you. I'm sure you're shooting for more, and we'll look for this number 19 going on throughout the season. Yeah, we're, uh, we'll be back next week or, uh, in a sportsman car. And uh, the rest of the season, I think we have two more points races left. Hopefully we can uh, get a championship under our belt for the end of the season. And uh, just this is just awesome. Nice job, Jesse. Thank, thank you. That's Jesse Mueller. He finishes in first tonight. We'll get a word with uh, Lee.